the experiment is frequency response of common source amplifier we are going to design a common source amplifier using voltage divider biasing for the given specification and conduct frequency response analysis the given supply voltage vdd is 15 volts drain current is 2 milliamps and the operating frequency is 100 hertz so these are the components required we will require a nmos 2n7000 resistors and capacitors ac voltage source dc voltage source and the oscilloscope to measure the output waveform so this is the circuit diagram for the common source amplifier so the input signal is given to the gate terminal and the output is taken at the drain terminal and the source terminal is round here the resistance r1 and r2 for the are for the biasing they are uh, they form the voltage divider biasing at the gate terminal uh, rd is the drain resistance at the load and rs is the source resistance uh, basically for uh, q point stabilization and uh, cs is the source bypass capacitor in order to improve the gain of the circuit c1 and c2 are the uh, coupling capacitors on the input and the output side so they are basically for blocking the dc component and allow the ac component and uh, the source bypass capacitor is going to bypass the ac signal to the ground so here again uh, we are going to give a small signal input of 100 millivolt and observe the amplified output at the collector terminal after the coupling capacitor C2. Here we have connected the oscilloscope channel A uh, at the input and channel B uh, for measuring the output signal and uh, the Bode plotter is connected to observe the frequency response. So this is the design. So based on the specification, so initially as a rule of thumb, uh, we are going to uh, consider the voltage at the drain resistance RD equal to voltage at the between drain to source equal to voltage between the source to ground equal to gate resist gate voltage VG equal to VDD by 3. So this is the rule of thumb uh, where all the three uh, voltages are taken equal to VG equal to VDD by 3. So accordingly the voltages uh, are found to be 5 volt and the volt, uh, based on uh, the drain current that is flowing from VDD we can find the drain resistance value using uh, VRD so RD can be found using VRD by ID and RS can be found using VRS by ID so here we can assume the source current is equal to the drain current since the uh, gate current is zero for the MOSFET the gate current is zero we can assume the drain current equal to the source current accordingly we can calculate what is the source resistance which is equal to VRS by ID and uh, this VG is uh, equal to VDD into R2 by R1 plus R2 which is uh, calculated using the voltage divider so VDD is the applied voltage we are calculating VG as the resistance R2 divided by sum of the two resistance R1 plus R2 into VDD so this is the uh, voltage uh, VG calculated using the voltage uh, voltage divider rule now according to this 2 R2 equal to R1 so we have calculated uh, brought the relation between R1 and R2 so we have to assume the values of the resistance R1 and R2 so since uh, the MOSFET has high input impedance we can uh, take the resistor value in mega ohms range so we can approximate R2 equal to 1 mega ohm accordingly R1 equal to 2 mega ohms and to find the capacitor values we can use the formula for the reactances of the capacitance C1, C2 and Cs accordingly the capacitive reactance XC1 equal to RG equal to R1 parallel R2 so here RG is the gate resistance which is R1 parallel R2 so when XC1 is equal to RG we can find C1 as 1 by 2 pi F into RG and XC2 is equal to RD so based on this C2 is found as 1 by 2 pi F into RD and XCS the source bypass capacitive reactance is 0.1 times of RS based on this CS is calculated as 1 by 0.1 into 2 pi F into RS so these are the design calculations for the common source amplifier so based on this we have calculated the values of the uh, drain resistance, source resistance, the coupling capacitor C1, C2 and Cs accordingly and mentioned the values, calculated values in the circuit. So we have found R1 as 2 mega ohms, R2 as 1 mega ohm, Rd and Rs 2.5 kilo ohms, 
C1 is 0 0.002 microfarad, C2 is 0.636 microfarad, CS is 6.396 microfarad and uh, let us simulate the circuit and observe the frequency response. This is the procedure. So set the amplitude of the input signal to the required voltage. So we can set a small signal voltage of 100 millivolt. Vary the frequency from 100 hertz to 1 megahertz and note down the corresponding output voltage. Tabulate the readings and calculate the gain using the gain formula 20 log V0 by VI in decibel. Plot the frequency response characteristic in the semilog graph sheet and find the bandwidth and the gain. So this is the model graph showing the input and the output waveforms. So our input signal is a small signal, output signal is the amplified signal. So this is the frequency response observed from the Bode plot. So here we are plotting the voltage gain versus frequency and uh, this is the graph obtained for the frequency response. So from the graph we can observe uh, at low frequency and high frequency bands the gain falls or the gain reduces due to the effects of the capacitance. At low frequency the gain is falling based on the coupling capacitor and the source bypass capacitor. At, and at high frequency band the gain is reducing because of the internal capacitance CGS and CGD. In the mid band the gain is constant and it reaches the highest value. The 3 decibel frequencies are calculated based on uh, the 3 decibel line drawn below the maximum gain and this point of intersection is calculated as upper cut off frequency and the lower cut off frequency. This difference between upper and the lower cut off frequencies will determine the bandwidth the gain, the product and the, of the gain and the bandwidth will give the gain bandwidth product. So this is the table where we can record all the frequency ranges, the output voltage and the gain in decibel. So we start from a low frequency range, uh, gradually increase to the midband range and extend till the high frequency range. So finally calculate the midband gain, bandwidth and the product of the gain and bandwidth. So now let us uh, look at the simulation for common source amplifier. So we have constructed uh, the common source amplifier using NMOS transistor 2N7000 and uh, we have chosen a resistance value of R1, R2, 2 mega ohms and 1 mega ohms, RD and RS 2.5 kilo ohms and input signal is applied at the gate terminal C1 and C2 0.002 microfarad, 0.636 microfarad uh, re respectively and CS is 6.396 microfarad. So now let us run the circuit. So here we can observe first the input and the output waveforms. So I have given a scale of uh, 100 millivolt or 200 millivolt scale for channel A which is the input. Channel B is the output signal which is 2 volt scale. So from the scale we can observe that the signal is getting amplified. So we can measure the voltage at the input and output. So my input signal is nearly 100 millivolt. My output is inverted because of 180 degree phase shift offered by the common source amplifier. So my output signal peak is 2.5 volt. So nearly 2.5 volt which is amplified portion of the input signal. So this is at 1 kilohertz. I can vary the frequency for all the ranges and tabulate the output voltage accordingly. Then calculate the gain in decibel. This is one way to calculate the frequency response. Alternatively, we can find the frequency response by using a Bode plotter. Here, we can connect the same input output to the Bode plotter and analyze the frequency response. Here, the horizontal scale is chosen between 20 Hz to 100 MHz. Vertical scale between 0 to 40 decibel. So, we can vary the cursor over the response and calculate the range of frequencies and the corresponding gain from the Bode plotter response and finally calculate the midband gain and the gain bandwidth product.